Hello friends and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to start building an API using Laravel 11 and Laravel Sanctum for authentication. So we will have a CRUD API with authentication and in the future videos we will use front-end JavaScript frameworks to access this API. So we will have one with React, one with Vue.js and probably one with vanilla JavaScript. But in this video we just want to learn about the API and how to build it. So since we are not going to have any front-end application we will use post man to test our endpoints so make sure you download this program for your machine from this website so the first step is to install a fresh new laravel application and if we go to getting started then installation we can go to this creating a laravel project and for the sake of simplicity i'm just going to use this composer command so let's copy it and paste it in our terminal and i'm going to change the app to laravel api app so when that is done we want to cd into that project and then open it in vs code so this is our typical Laravel app and we've already covered this in the Laravel series. And if we take a look at our routes, we only have the console and web.php which is used for a web application but we want to build an API so we need the API PHP and we need to install that so back to Laravel documentation we want to go back to Laravel Sanctum documentation and there is an installation section here that we want to go to and using this artisan command we can install our API so I'm going to copy this command and paste it in my terminal Laravel Sanctum uses API tokens and for that we have a new table in our database so we need to run our migrations one more time so when you get this prompt you just have to press enter that would confirm the migrations and this will create a new table that is called personal access tokens in our database now let's go back to our project you notice we have a new document called api.php and if you open your database under tables you should have personal access tokens now before we go any further i just want to give a quick look at my extension so if you want you can also install this we are working on laravel and php so you don't have to install the javascript extensions the ones that I recommend are Laravel blade formatter then Laravel blade snippets then Laravel extra intelligence we also have Laravel snippets and then if you move on to PHP side we have PHP debug and PHP intelligence and for the SQLite database viewer I'm using this extension called SQLite editor so these are just for our PHP Laravel development and you notice I don't have many extensions and in my experience having too many extensions just break your code and it may cause problems so let's get back to our project and building our API so you notice we have this default route that goes to forward slash user and it is protected by a middleware from all colon sanctum so this is a special middleware that belongs to sanctum and we've already installed it using the artisan command that we just used but we want to start very simple and we will get to this when we start with the authentication for now I'm just going to comment this out and start fresh so I'm going to create a get route here set the path or the URI to forward slash and then pass a function here just like a simple Laravel application the same way we do it in our web.php and in this function I just want to return the string API that's all so a very simple route that goes to forward slash just like our web.php that is returning a welcome view and it goes to forward slash let's go back to our terminal and list our routes so we want to say php artisan route list you notice we have four get routes one is our home page that is coming from our web.php and it just just goes to forward slash then we have one route that says API this second route is coming from our api.php and this is the route we defined we also have these two routes that are part of laravel and sanctum that we don't need to worry about it but these are the routes we have so in fact if we change this uri which is inside our api document and just add something here for example posts and if we list our routes again you notice now it says api forward slash posts so all the routes that we declare inside the api.php document will be prefixed with the api text so i'm going to turn this back to a forward slash and in our web.php i'm going to delete this home page we don't actually need this we don't have to do anything in this document this is just to keep things clean again if we list our routes we have only one forward slash api now let's serve our application on the local development server and use postman to go to this route and see what we get so we want to say php artisan serve this will give us url we want to copy it and open postman you should have a window like this and you have an address bar here that you can specify the method we want to use the get method then paste that url 
and just press send. So in this bottom section, which is our response, we are getting a 404, meaning we don't have this page. But if we go to forward slash API, send again, you notice we get our text API, which we are returning in our function. And of course, you can see the status code, which is 200. So what I plan for this video is to create the CRUD application first. So we don't want to get into authentication at all. And we want to cover the simpler parts first, and then we will start with Sanctum and authentication. And creating the routes for our CRUD application is almost exactly the same as a simple Laravel web application, which again, we covered in the Laravel series. So I strongly recommend watching that series if you haven't, so you know how Laravel works behind the scenes. So basically, we just want to create models, controllers, factories, and all the necessary parts for our new resource. And we can use an artisan command for that. So I'm going to open a new tab in our terminal and run PHP artisan make model and use the H flag so we can get some help. So first, we need to give it a name and then we have these options. So in the Laravel series, we used the A flag, which created all the necessary parts for us, including a resource controller. Now, this is exactly what we want, but in a resource controller, we have these two functions called create and edit that is used for rendering a form. Now, we don't really care about those two. We don't need to render any form. So we could either use this and then go manually delete those methods, or we have a flag here that is dash dash API that would create that resource controller without those methods. So this is the one we want to use the A flag and the API flag. So let's run that command again to make our model. And I'm going to call it post just like the previous videos. So we want to use the A flag first to create all the necessary documents and also API flag. So dash dash API and press enter. And this will create our model, our factory migrations, seeders and so on. So now let's go back to our project and start preparing our model and migration files. Let's just start with the model. So inside our app folder, and then under models, we now have a post model. We just want to add the fillable array to this so we would be able to write to our database. So we can say protected and then fillable, just like what we have in the user model right here, and set this to an array. Now this array would contain the fields for our post table. For example, I just want to have a title and a body. So later on, we will add the relationships between our post and user model. But for now, let's leave it as it is because we don't have users and we don't have the functionality to create one. So for now, we will just work on our post model. Next step is to open our migrations folder. And the last document should be this create posts table. And in this up method, we have the method to create our table. And we just want to add the columns that we defined in the post model. So we want to have a string for our title and then another column of type text for the body of the post. And that's it for our post table. So now we have a new table and we need to run the migration command again. So let's say PHP artisan migrate. This will create our posts table in our database. And of course we can see it in our database SQLite and we have posts. Next, we want to define our routes. Now in the Laravel series, we talked about this resource function that would take a name and the resource controller that would create all the routes for us. But since we are working with an API, we also have a convenient method that is called API resource. So it is similar to the resource function, but this function is not looking for a create and edit method because those belong to a web application but the arguments are the same. So we can just pass the name here. We want to say posts and the controller. So in this case, we have a post controller that we want to make sure it is imported up here and we want to pass it as the second argument and that's it. And in fact, we can delete this test route. So now let's list our routes one more time and see what we have now. So back to the terminal, if I run PHP artisan route list, you notice we have all these routes created for us. So we have forward slash API forward slash posts, that is a get method, and it is using our index method in post controller. Now these routes also have names, but we don't really need them. We have a post route that is used for creating a post and it is using the store method. We have another get route that goes to a dynamic URL that is used for showing an individual post. And then we have our put and delete routes. One is used for updating a post and the other one for deleting a post. So all we have to do now 
is to go to these methods in our post controller and create our handlers. So let's go back to our project and open post controller. So if we explore this document, you notice we have index, store, show, update, and destroy. So we don't have those two other methods that are called create and edit. So for the index method, which is used for listing the resource, we just want to return everything, all the posts. So we can say return post and make sure it is imported and we can use the all method. So at this point, I just want to return all the posts and we are not worried about pagination. So let's see what does this method give us if we go to that route. So in Postman, if we go to forward slash API and then posts and make sure it is a get method and press send, you notice we get an empty array. That makes sense because we don't have any posts. So next is our store method that is used for storing a resource. And we have this a store post request that is imported for us from another document and we don't actually need this. So I'm going to use the request itself from HTTP. So make sure it is imported up here and we can delete these two imports that are coming from the requests folder. So if we open our folder directory, we have this folder that was created when we generated our model and we can delete this folder altogether. That is just used to separate the rules and some functionality from our store and update method. So down here we have an update method that is showing an error at the moment. We just want to replace this with the same request that we imported up here. So to save a post in our database, we already know how to do this. We just have to validate the fields and then save the post. So we are going to grab the request object and use the validate method on it that would take an array with the fields under validations. So we can say, for example, this is required and the maximum character is 255. And you notice I'm using a pipe here instead of an array just to use a different approach compared to the Laravel series. Then we want to make sure the body is also filled. So we just want to say this is required. So we want to say if the validation is passed, just return OK. Let's test this out. Back to Postman. We want to go to the same URL, but this time we want to make a post request. Remember, in our routes, we have this URL that is expecting a post request and it is using the store method. That's what we are using here. And we just want to send a request. So if I press send here, we get a 404 not found, even though we have this URL and the method is right. And that's because we are missing a header and that is the accept property and the value for that should be application JSON. So just by adding that, if I press send again, notice we get a 422, which is unprocessable content and we get our errors. So the title is required as well as the body. So when we are building our API and then in our front end application, we want to make sure that the header always has this accept property that is set to application JSON. Otherwise it's not going to work. And this is mentioned in Laravel Sanctum documentation that we need to set the accept property to application JSON in our header. So now it's clear that our endpoint is expecting a title and the body. So let's go to the body tab here and we want to choose raw and then JSON. So we want to create curly brackets, then in double quotations, we want to say title, for example, post one, and then the body with some random text. So this is the body of our request. Now let's press send again. And this time we get our OK, that means the validation is passed. So we have access to those properties now. All we have to do is to save it in our database. So instead of that return, I can grab the post model and use the create method that would look for an array with the required fields. For us is the title and the body. So I can just save this into a variable and then pass it down here. That would create the post for us. And when we are done, we just want to return that post. So I will create an associative array here that say post is gonna be the post we just created. So we can save this one into a variable and then pass it down here. So make sure we end this statement and let's create a post now. Back to Postman, we already have the necessary parts. Make sure you have the accept property in the headers and the body that includes JSON with the title and the body. So let's press send. We get our response with the 200 status code and also we have our post. So if we check our database now, under posts, we have a new entry. Now we've already set up our index method. So I'm going to duplicate this tab in Postman and change the method to get and just press send. So you notice we get an array with one object in it, which is our post. So since this is just getting the post, I'm going to delete this value from the body. We don't need this here just to keep it simple. All right, so we've already 
covered two methods, listing all the resources and creating a resource. Next, we want to cover an individual page for each post. First, let's create another post here. So we have two posts and I'm going to call this post two. Body is going to be the same and we just want to press send. So now we have two posts and in our database, we have post one and post two. Now the show method is going to be very easy because all this one needs to do is to return the post that is being accepted as a parameter in this method. So if we copy this return statement from our store method and just paste it here, that means we are returning this particular post. So let's go back to Postman. And again, I'm going to duplicate this get route. Now, if you go to the terminal where our routes are, you notice we have this get route that is looking for a post ID. So in Postman, if I just add forward slash one and press enter, we get that particular post. And you notice I'm returning an associative array here, but this is just my preference. We don't even have to do this. We can just simply return the post itself that would return an object for us. So if I send a request to the same URL again, you notice we have one object with that post. So we can keep it simple like this. In fact, even up here, we don't have to do this. So we can just say return that post that was just created. But again, you can see how simple it is. We are just returning this post that is passed down to the show method using route model binding of Laravel. So of course, if we go to forward slash two, we get post two, very simple. Next is our update method and then the destroy method. So we want to update a post, then delete a post. Now updating a post is quite similar to the creation of a post. So I can just grab everything from the store method, then paste it down here. And first we want to validate the fields then we want to update that particular post that we are accepting here. So we want to get rid of this part and use the update method that is again looking for an array with the new values and we are saving those values inside these fields. So we just want to update this particular post and then we return it. So let's test this one now. I'm going to go to the postman and duplicate this post route because it has all the values I need. I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to change the method to put. And for the URL, we want to, for example, update post one. So again, to make sure our header has the accept property and in the body, we want to say post one, maybe updated. That's it. So press send, we get post with the ID of one and the title that is updated. And to make sure it worked properly. You can see in the database, we have the text updated. All right, let's move on to the last method, which is destroy. And again, it's very easy. We just want to grab the post and delete. Now for the destroy, I want to return the message just so we have something. So I'm going to return an array or rather an associative array and create a message property that says the post was deleted. So let's go back to postman and try to delete this post one. I'm going to duplicate this tab, then change the put method to delete. And we just want to delete post one. So we don't need the body. Let's get rid of it. It wouldn't make a difference, but it's cleaner. And we just want to send this request. So we get a message that says the post was deleted. And if we check our database, we have only one post that is post two. All right, so we created our CRUD application, even though it doesn't have any authentication in place, but we have routes that can list all the resources we can create, we can show an individual resource or update or delete one. So this was the easier part of our API application. In the next video, we want to add authentication using Laravel Sanctum. So we will go through registration, login and log out. And then when we put all of them together, we want to authorize certain actions for authenticated users. So add policies to make sure, for instance, that user one owns host one so they can update or delete it. Otherwise, they are not authorized to do such actions. Also, it would be just like our Laravel series, but we are using an API instead of a web application. So see you at the next video.